Hey guys, here you go again. It's another video without my face. Lucky you. Today, what I wanted to do is walk you through this image here and how I created it. So often I am photographing stuff, working on it in Photoshop, and I keep the PSD file, or more often than not a PSB file, because it exceeds the two gigabyte limit set by PSD. And my intention is I will show my layer structure and what I've done to create the finished result. It rarely happens, but today I thought I would do that. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's take a look at what I've done. Before we get into the structure of the layers, I'll just tell you a little bit about how I captured this image. I am free holding the camera, no tripod. I'm with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and I am on vibration reduction to actually minimize those vibrations. Tripod would have done that so much better. However, I don't want to be stuck in the middle of a road with cars potentially hurtling past me. Um, it's a pretty quiet road, but there were still vehicles on it. I had to wait until everything had gone before I got this shot, so it looks very much like it's um, you know in a really isolated spot, but there were people there. There are more than 10 people that live in New Zealand, and I saw some of them, which was cool. I shot this on my Nikon D850, but that's kind of irrelevant. Whatever camera you've got nowadays is going to do a great job. I just love the high resolution of that sensor, but you'd be able to capture this with whatever gear you're using. But a telephoto lens certainly helps to bring that mountain more into the foreground and more of a dominant presence within the frame. Some of you faced with this particular file may think, where am I going to take this image? How am I going to finesse this so it's a really nice finished piece? I suggest you have an idea in your mind before you even get started as to what you want to do with a photo. I knew that I needed to clean this image up in terms of the telegraph poles and the little markers at the side of the road. I also knew that I wanted to cool off the background of the image so we had a warmer foreground and a nice rich cool blue in the background. So those are my kind of main aims but along the way there were other things and artistic choices that I made. So let's have a look at the layers and see what I did. Here you can see on this in the layers panel here oh my gosh there's actually a lot of work that's gone into this particular image. Um, now my intention is not to alter too dramatically the original capture, but I always feel that post-production is a really important part of the photographic process and taking the image that was captured in camera to a place where you feel it should be, that's just so important. So let's see what I've done. If I hold Alt and click the eyeball on the very bottom layer, we're gonna see what the image looked like before I did anything. So let's see, this is our after, and this is our before. This was brought into Photoshop straight out of Lightroom, and if I double click it, you will actually see that it's actually um, a fully editable raw file. So you can see the minor adjustments that I made in Lightroom to the original file, um, but I love to bring it in as an editable raw layer so that I can make different adjustments to different areas of the photo with all that raw data still there and those changes I can then mask out where I feel it's necessary. So if I click OK, let's jump straight to the next layer and have a look what I did next. In the next layer you can see here that we've boosted up the shadow detail in the trees. I didn't want to do that through the whole image, uh, just through the trees there. I thought that'd be in important to bring more detail through there. The next change we've made is actually bring a little more detail through to this layer of trees through here in the center of the image. So if I turn that on, you'll see that. And it's just masked out with this mask here. And you can see your mask just by holding Alt and clicking on the mask. Next from there, what have I done? Oh, that's a nice change. Okay, so that's the top half of the image kind of taken care of. So if we double click on that, we'll see it's the same raw file that I started with, but in this case, I've just dropped the exposure slightly, changed the color temperature, and then we were able to bring in more blues to that background. And that also helps with a sense of 
depth to the image. Blues recede from our eyes, whereas warmer colors pop closer towards us. One slight annoyance I have with Photoshop that it says it needs to re-render that particular layer, even though I made no adjustments. But anyway, so if we turn that off, we'll see the overall color balance, color temperature of this image. And I really didn't like that for the background. I felt that even when I was there, it looked a lot cooler, and more blue in the background. By masking that in, we were able to introduce all of that that cool blue in there and you'll also see by using a raw layer I'm actually able to bring back the detail that was initially lost in the clouds here we're bleaching out rather drastically there we can bring all of that back with an editable raw layer fantastic okay let's see what I did next okay just darken the sky down in that upper right here so most of the changes I'm making beyond this point are minor aesthetic changes um, just to sort of finesse the image so from there, okay, here we can see I'm just adding a little bit of orange from the sunlight coming over from left. That's hitting the mountains here, and I really wanted to work on that orange. So let's have a look at my mask there. All I would have done is use the uh, Select Color Range tool, and I would have been clicking around here somewhere just to select that particular color. Let's cancel that, and then using again another raw layer and just introducing a much more warm color temperature just to that part masked in there and then from there I've got that within its own folder uh, not quite sure why I did that I'm sure I had a great reason at the time and the next thing we've done this layer here usually I will call that a I will type retouch and have that labeled as a retouch layer so you can see our before and our after and it is purely just a cleaning up exercise at that point. So what I've done, I would have just used the um, spot healing brush tool here and I would have painted away those rather eye-catching telegraph poles. Now the astute viewer will notice something odd about this cleanup uh, and that is that our telephone telegraph wires stop abruptly just here. Where do they go? Uh, I think they just disappeared because Mr. Turn got a little bit lazy, couldn't be bothered to clean all of this up. I probably should have done. But I feel that the retouch layer and just cleaning things up is really important. Even things like, if you look at the top right hand corner here, I've actually just darkened that down ever so slightly. Um, the top left as well. Little things at, towards the edge of the frame that are distracting, like the busyness of the clouds here, I find detract from the rather cool arch-like effect of the clouds running through the middle. So without this up here, you would be focusing more on this arch. That's why I've just taken a blue brush and just kind of painted over that area there. I've just sampled the sky over this side and painted that over the top. So our before and after for the clouds, looking good. The next thing I've done is I've added a black and white layer in soft light and I've done that at 59% opacity. It just adds a little bit of contrast. Uh, beyond that, if we have a little look, we've got curves here, and they're just brightening up the uh, the top of the mountains there. Just because they were getting a little bit distracting, there was too much contrast there, so I've just masked the mountains and literally just used a curve that has just boosted up the shadows here. So if we turn that off and on, we can see that brightens that. So everything we're doing is really subtle, really minor, but it all adds to the overall effect. What have we done next? Okay, we're brightening the sky, and that's just to create a sense of layering. So the layer we've got in the foreground is rich and dark. We've got a kind of mid layer through here, and then we're much lighter and softer through the sky now. So without it, the sky is quite dark and again subtlety we've just brightened that up ever so slightly now i've decided that we'd like to boost the shadows again you barely notice it but it's enough i've then used the monster shortcut control shift alt and e to flatten the layer and from there you'll notice a little change going on here now this is where creative license comes in and some people may go, oh, you can't do that. You've altered reality. Um, personally, if it's subtle, if it 
enhances your vision as an artist. And I'm not saying to people, this is exactly how this mountain looks. I don't even know what mountain this is, to be honest. Just aesthetically, I felt that the central peak of the mountain needed to be raised slightly. So I've literally come in with Liquify and raised it ever so slightly. And at the same time, I've moved the clouds a little bit as I've brought that up. I haven't been super precise because, again, that's kind of embracing this arch-like effect that these clouds are having here. Um, and you'll see that um, the telegraph wires, that I was like, oh, I'm going to leave them earlier. I've now gone, nah, they got to go. They have to go. So it's a much cleaner image now. I've then used a detail extractor filter and it's subtle it's subtle we're at 25 percent but if i boost that to 100 percent, you'll see what's going on so that's it off that's it on it's just adding some details through there and i used nick software color effects pro to achieve this uh, nowadays i would probably jump into luminar uh, you guys may have seen my videos recently where i've um i've really embraced the Luminar 3, Luminar 4, they're doing a fantastic job with a lot of these filters that are AI driven, saves a lot of the heavy lifting for you, which is great. Incidentally, if you want to get your hands on a copy of that, I have a discount code, which is ATSKY10. I'll put a link in the description below. Dive in there, get yourself that. It's like $100 or something. It's a really good investment, in my opinion. Let's move on to the next filter, which is sunlight, which may even have come from the golden hour filter within Luminar, perhaps. Um, can't quite remember now, but it's just given us a bit of a warm kind of softening to this image. And here we go. This is Color Effects Pro, a game which I really love. Um, one filter in particular, which is the Glamour glow filter it's been with, like with the portrait editing section but i use it for landscapes because i just think it adds this kind of ethereal look if you know the autumn effect it's kind of like emulating the autumn effect which um which is a softening of the image but done in a i find tasteful subtle way so you don't want to be too heavy-handed with it um which i've not been in this case i don't feel uh, the next layer here we're just adding this little bit of blue to this section here now this is what i'm talking about when i'm talking subtlety um, and paying attention to little distractions within your image and it's something that i could have addressed much earlier in my retouch but it's something that's obviously caught my eye as we've gone along i'm like hang on this bit's nice and orangey over here yet it's competing with warmth and oranges over this side i don't want that I want to just kind of see the sunlight hitting here. So what do we need to do? Add some contrast. We do that by introducing the opposite color of orange, bit of blue, purple kind of toning here. Again, I'm feeling we're heading in a good direction here. Here, I've now gone, okay, let's add more contrast. And we've done that by enriching that color with a curves layer. So all I've done is actually just bring the curve down so if we see me doing that, if you push it all the way up, we head towards white. But I brought it down and that's saturated that color that's there on the hill. Nice one. Uh, beyond here, everything I've done beyond this point is purely for color toning. So what I'm going to do is actually grab all of these and put them into a group. I do that by selecting all of those and just grouping them and we'll just call that color toning and we'll turn it on and off so we can see what what effect that's having so if i rattle through putting all those eye icons on and we turn that off and we turn that on whether or not you like it personal preference color toning and color grading is very much a personal preference i'm liking this it's obviously put some more yellow in the highlights uh, it's increased the saturation slightly and it's added just a little bit more warmth to the oranges. So let's turn that off, turn that on. And you can see we've got a plethora of layers going on here. What have we got? Nine of them just to create this effect. Really, like you might be able to achieve a similar thing in maybe three layers, but I find that it's an artistic process where you can just keep adding layer on layer on layer until you finally got something you you like. So let's go through them really quickly one by one. So the first one is a blue layer, which we're applying through the trees here at just 15%. It's so subtle. 
some of these I might need to crank them all the way up so you can see what we're actually doing. There we are at 100%. That is the effect that we're having. This is the mask that we've got here and that would have been derived from coming to the channels and actually working in either the blue, the green, probably the red channel as a starting point and then ending up with something that looks a little more like that. But that, uh, that kind of percentage, 100%, far too much let's put it back to 15 and move on to the next one and here we're just putting a little bit of soft oranges through the clouds and on the snow there just to warm it up slightly um, again that's just in normal blending mode so we're not even using any of these other blending modes we're just in normal at nine percent before after subtle what have we done now added a little bit more yellow to a more localized part of the highlights. So if we look at the, the mask for this one, the whites which are showing through the color toning, so white reveals, black conceals, we are seeing the, the areas, the white areas where this orange will be affecting. And now if we look at the mask for the yellow, it's much more refined, the, the white, it's much more intensely focused just on the highlights. So we've got a more yellowy look right on the really brightest highlights. At this point, I felt like we were a little too cool in the trees in the foreground. So I've obviously added just a little bit of warmth here. So again, if I bump this up here, you'll see what we're actually doing in terms of adding color, but we don't want to be at 100%. I like subtlety and I hope you do too. Now I felt like everything's warm, including the road, but what if we added contrast to the road compared to the, the dry brush, the trees? So I've masked out the road and neutralized it by adding blue. We're at 39% on soft light, but if we push that all the way, you can see that that blue is kind of harmonizing with the mountains and the sky. Um, so I had that at 39%. With retrospect, I might have even pushed that up a little higher, but let's leave it there. Hue saturation, we're just saturating that slightly. We've literally just bumped the saturation up 16%. The next filter we've done here, sorry, the next layer we've done here is just a soft light layer with a gray. You're thinking, well, what's that going to do in soft light? It'll be a slightly darker gray, and that's going to add contrast. If it was a 50% gray, it's going to do nothing, nothing at all. Uh, but we were sat at 45%. We were actually darkening that gray. So if I just show you by dropping this down, you'll see that we get darker and add contrast. If I go the other way, we get lighter and reduce contrast. So at 50%, we're doing nothing, but we, were, we actually had that sat down just slightly below that at 45%, just adding a little bit of contrast there. And the final two changes I made, one was to curves, which was creating a vignette. So you can see my mask, I'm whatever changes I've made with my curve are affecting this white area around here. Let's double click, we've darkened that down and we've even dropped the whites so that we have no pure whites at the edge of our frame and we have no pure blacks at the edge of the frame because we've lifted those up. If I lift that up there, you'll see the area that's being affected by that but rather than being pure black, we're just lifting it ever so slightly. So this is actually reducing contrast and darkening the image around there. So it's a much more refined way to get a really nice vignette going on. I love that. So if we jump all the way back to our starting point, let's do a before and after. Here we go. Here's before and here's after. Here's before and here's after. Hopefully, guys, you like the end result, and I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of all my layering and processing, um, because I'm about to flatten this, get rid of the PSB file, which is currently sitting around seven or eight gigabytes of data, and I'm going to convert this to a TIFF. So that is the last time these layers will ever exist. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in another video. Cheers, guys. Bye for now. Thank you.